Hi, I'm Ariane Seto from Ashburton College and I'm really looking forward to learning about the dairy industry. We drink and we sell an awful lot of it. Milk. Our milk products feed more than 100 million worldwide. And our dairy industry contributes to one quarter of our export earnings. With nearly 5 million cows being milked, dairy farming is New Zealand's single most important economic activity. Ariane's headed to Singletree Farm in South Canterbury to check out farm management. It might be a crisp cold dawn, but it's a warm welcome from farm manager Will Grayling. Morning Ariane. Morning. How are you going? Good, thank you. Story. Will, a past Young Farmer of the Year, has been managing this large Ashburton farm for two and a half years. He's just taken over the management of a second farm, so he's one of dairy farming's fast rising stars. Right Ariane, so this is where it all happens. It's the business end of it. So the cows are coming on from this side. 80 bales, so 80 cows at a time. And it's taking about 10 minutes to milk them out as they go around. Then they exit out the other side to the nice fresh grass. So we're coming in, hand under here, flick it on, the automatic cup remover, so it automatically comes off, put them on. All done. Next. A huge range in what a farm manager does, so I can be doing anything from milking the cows to measuring the grass. You do need to know how to do most things, and if not, you also need to know your limits and, and access those that, that do know. Yeah, it's good to have a, a finger in most pies and know a little bit about everything. So what's going on in the yard with the gates? So we have a top gate at the front with some chains that's coming back and grabbing about 150 cows at a time. And we've got about 500 in the herd, so we don't want to push the back ones because it pushes them too hard. So we're taking the front away and we're just following up gently with the backing gate at the back there. Yeah, we have a, a reasonably large farm now, so we started on 800 cows and then just uh, going to winter 3,100 cows this year. So. Um, yeah, just over 3,000 cows with sort of 13 or 14 staff should, should keep us out of mischief for a wee while. So my role as a manager is to make sure that we make enough milk at uh, lowest costs and we can't just put the cows in the paddock. We just wouldn't survive like that. So we need to make a dollar to make it work, to pay the staff, to increase you know, the cows, increase the investment back into the farm. So we need to get it right and we, there's a lot of tools out there that we utilise to make sure that we're not wasting any feed and that we're doing it efficiently. There might be 3,000 cows here but Will needs to know each one is in good health. A number called condition scoring is given to each cow. So what is condition scoring? So Ariana, we're trying to decide essentially how fat the cow is. So we're out here in the paddock, we've got this handy little book here, we're looking at a few key areas of the cow. So first of all, looking along her backbone, seeing whether it's sharp and raised or whether it's nice and smooth across the top. A score between 1 and 10 is given to the key body areas. The normal range for a cow is between 3 and 5. So this white one, can you see her long ribs? Slightly. Slightly? Is her backbone raised or is it flat? It's raised. There. So we'll look at our book here. What are we? Three long ribs. Maybe three and a half, four. Look at that, spot on. Somewhere between three and a four. Yeah. So which herd is this? So this herd is the younger cows. Uh, this time of year we're a little bit concerned about their condition, so we put these ones on once a day. Yep. So we're only milking these ones in the morning. So trying to take a little bit less energy out of them and you know, try and put some weight on their back so they can be in good condition so for calving in about four or five months' time. So. Oh, yeah. Feeding out is Ariane's next job, and she'll do that with farm's operation manager, Ramon Westerbar. We've got palm kernel just behind the tractor here. We're going to load it up, and we're going to feed it to these cows. Palm kernel's great for putting that weight on the cows. Do you know how to drive a tractor? A little bit. A little bit. Oh, we'll get you trained up and see how you go, eh? OK. Get these cows some feed. A cow really is a massive munching machine. Each needs a colossal 80 to 110 kilograms of grass per day, depending upon the time of year, something which is generally possible in New Zealand's temperate climate. It all means our happy, free-range cows produce milk at a very competitive price. They did well. Yes. Next trick is to learn the joystick. <laughs> So what's your regular day-to-day -day routine? Well, because I'm part of the roster, I could either be here at 4 for milking or coming in later at 7 o'clock. Um, and then I go around and make sure all the cows are all fed and I give the guys a list on the, 
of jobs on the board and make sure they all know what they're doing. Just remember to give them a few revs. More revs, more revs, more revs. Go forward. So when you're feeding out, is there anything you keep an eye on, like a cow that's a little bit under condition or something like that? Uh, yeah, I keep, we keep an eye out for that. Um, generally, if the cow doesn't come to the feed, there's something wrong. If you've given them their new grass around the fence up and one cow's lagging behind, there's something wrong. Ramon's job of managing the day-to-day -day running of the farm differs from Will's job, which includes managing the team. You do have to have a lot of different personal skills and being able to handle other people because I can't do it by myself. So I've got to manage the team in an effective way that they're happy and they're productive. Most of all, I think, You've got to understand it from the business side of things. We, we can't do it for fun, so we have to make sure that what we are doing is worthwhile doing. You've got to be a good numbers person, I think, and you know make a decision on the spot, see it, and sometimes it's not always a calculated decision. Sometimes you just got to back yourself and go with the gut decision, which is often the right one. Here we are, computer time. And software can be used to back those gut decisions. The laptop is hooked up to a probe embedded in the soil. The moisture levels in this paddock have been recorded and the trends can be seen. So where would you want it? What percentage would you preferably want it? We want to keep it between, we don't want it too dry, but we also don't want it too full. Because if it's too full and it rains, it means we're wasting our irrigation water, which is really expensive. Yeah, there's a lot of technology out uh, available now. The main ones for me revolve around the pasture management and in allowing us to make better decisions out on farm to make more milk in the vat. This paddock needs more water. It's Ariane's job to turn the water on. Any personality traits can, can make a successful dairy farmer. And for me, it's about enjoying being outside, enjoying working with animals, and enjoying a physical challenge. It is, it's physical. Go nuts, go, go hard, literally. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> Owning or working within a business that you can see right from when the cows eat the grass to harvesting the milk, that's drive a lot of satisfaction. And then the further up you get, the more involved you get around financial side of it and staff management and all those things are a huge challenge. And yeah, it's people that enjoy a good challenge and enjoy the rewards from those challenges that I think are suitable for dairy. So it sounds like the cows think it's dinner time. So we better wind the reel up and uh, say goodnight to them and give them some food, eh? Okay. It's been a really full-on day for Ariane, and she certainly earned her dinner too. I've really enjoyed my time here today at the farm. I've been up since too early, and next I'm going to Hamilton to learn about agricultural science. Dairy NZ's purpose is to enhance the profitability, sustainability and competitiveness of the dairy industry. Funded by farmers, the annual budget of more than $60 million provides funds for research, development, training, disease control and education. Ariane will be meeting three specialists. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, I'm Ariane. Jane Kay is one of Dairy NZ's research scientists. Her work includes the effects of nutrition on milk solids. Carhill Wim's research focus is on options to improve the nutrition in various pastures. And Nicole Steele is a postgraduate student who's working on disease control. First, Ariane heads to Live Farm one of the research facilities. So this is a DRNZ research farm, so it acts exactly like a normal, um, a normal you know, commercial farm. The cows are milked, the tanker comes in and collects the milk you know, um, every day. There's so much more that goes on here than what you'd ever see on a, um, on a commercial farm. In this shed, it's possible to monitor the feeding regime of an individual cow. So what we have is we have this as a transponder and the cows wear this around their neck. And what it allows them to do is this transponder will only open one gate so the cow can walk up to that gate and what will happen is um, the transponder sits here and it will then allow that gate to open and she's got access to, to her feed. And not only what goes in can be measured, in this basement, bags collect what goes out. What we can do here is we can have the animals upstairs and we attach the, um, the chutes to them and so in this bucket here we can collect all their faeces and in this um, hose here we can collect all their urine. We'll have a group of cows that we will split into, into different treatments depending on what the research project is. So we've got one um, experiment running at the moment where we're looking at two different feeds. So we're looking at um, feeding cows maize grain which is a high starch feed or feeding cows um, palm kernel extract which is a high fibre feed. It's milking time and these are the cows taking part in the feed trial. 
So this is where we collect all the milk from the cows. So each cow has an electronic ID, so when she comes onto the platform, it'll record that she's in that particular bale. And then what we can do is these uh, milk meters collect a proportion of the milk that that cow's producing. First, Ariane learns how to provide samples for fat and protein content testing. Number. Have a look down the spreadsheet. 1149. Because the dairy farmer is paid um, for, for the milk solids, which is the fat and protein content of the milk, um, we can test those each week in the cow and, um, and we know that w the effect that the treatment is having on, on that milk solids and how much that would be worth to the, um, to the dairy farmer out on their farm. So a big part of the research um, projects that we do is not only looking at the milk that the cows have produced and the grass that they've eaten, but also we try and get an understanding of what's um, going on within the cows. And blood and urine tests are needed for that. First, the urine sample. So I can show you if you like a technique that we use, so it's much easier, as you can see, to catch them as they go. Yeah. Urine provides figures on the cow's nitrogen levels. Go round and round like this. So this is good to do on a cold winter's morning because it warms your hands up. <laughs> well, there's no sample today, so Ariane moves on to blood. So it's really a very simple um, process. We just have one of these, it's a needle holder, and we put in a... Um, and put in a, a needle in the top of it. Three samples have to be collected for differing tests. Do you want to go and see? Yep. Okay. But just when you're not expecting it. So we've got our sample in the end. Now back to getting some blood. So if you just give that a good wipe under there and make sure it's clean. And what we do is we just push in the, um, we're pushing the needle in there and when I push that in, get um, blood in there. Blood provides information on energy levels. I really enjoy the research part. I enjoy, you know, um, actually actually doing the research. But I really enjoy um, interacting with farmers and interacting with um, rural professionals, so vets and consultants. We spend a, a lot of time um, talking to farmers at, at workshops and, you know, at field days. Um, we write articles for um, for journals that, that farmers um, that farmers read. We also talk um, in front of other scientists who will critique, you know, the research that we've done and make sure that it's robust. Ariane's on a steep learning curve, but there's more. Next, she's growing the bacteria that causes mastitis with researcher Nicole Steele. Mastitis is an inflammation of the udder. There's a simple test to show its presence, even if there's no visible signs. And basically, you can use it right beside the cow and you can find out whether the cow might have a subclinical infection or not by um, taking a sample of milk and adding some detergent. If the milk goes gluggy, the cow has mastitis. Dairy NZ is not all about the cows. The demonstration wetlands area has been planted to show ways to keep pollution out of New Zealand's waterways. With proper planting, 90% of the damaging nitrogen can be filtered out. There's pasture management studies too. Ariane's hitching a ride to a pasture program on a whole drop harvester. Scientist Carhill Wims specialises in pasture management. We're quite lucky that we have a perennial ryegrass. It's an adaptable uh, pasture species and it can grow across a, in a wide, wide range of environments and soil types. However, it has some limitations. For example, as you've seen, um, it doesn't grow so well in, in summer dry areas. It's really struggling for moisture and as a result um, there is a, well, there's virtually no feed available in this paddock here for um, dairy cows. So uh, part of the research at uh, Dairy Z is looking at um, alternative uh, species. In the paddocks alongside are two different crops, lucerne and chicory. These long-rooted plants are faring much better than the ryegrass. So um, Ariane, today I'm just going to show you how to use the, the plate meter. Um, it's a tool we use um, in research trials for measuring the height of uh, pastures. After we switch on our plate measure and set it to zero, we um, take a plonk, we call them plonks, every four, every four steps. Um, and I'll give you a go. The plate meter readings indicate the chicory is ready for harvest. For example, the Haldrup is a tool that we use here. Um, so it cuts a generally five meter strip um, of pasture and uh, all the pasture is collected and, and weighed by the, by the machine and a subsample of pasture is then collected and brought into the lab for um, dry matter analysis. So this is a, a, you know, a more accurate method of calculating pasture mass. Once the samples are dried, nutrient value is recorded. What I like about my job is the diversity of, um, of work. Um, from being out in the paddock, taking samples and assessing pastures to being um, in front of the computer, analysing my data and you know, discovering new things. It gives me a really good sense of satisfaction when I see um, that, that our work is making a difference and it's improving you know, farmer outcomes throughout New Zealand.
So from pasture to animal health, milk solids to environmental studies, Ariane's had a wide-ranging look at the work of Dairy NZ. I've really enjoyed myself here in Dairy NZ because I didn't realise there was that researching side of the dairying. I just thought it was, you know, let's go work on a farm. Now I'm going to be going home to find out what sort of professional help a dairy farmer can get. Back home in Ashburton, Ariane's meeting Dairy NZ's consulting officer for Central Canterbury, Juliet Lee. So are we going to Will's farm now? Yeah, we can go right now. We'll just jump in the car and we'll head on out there. Juliet spends a lot of time on the road. So what's your job role? So um, as part of my work with Dairy NZ, I work with farmers daily on making decisions. Um, some of those decisions are financial, some of them are about cows and grass, and some of them are about people management. So my job as a facilitator um, is to really control the flow of information coming from the research and development teams down into the farmers' minds, but also the flow of information back to the research team about what it is that farmers Hello. actually want to be finding out. Lots of the farms down here are pretty good at uh, renewing the pastures on a regular basis, but I think probably there's definitely room for improvement. Yeah, yeah. It's quite important that you know the farmer would um, try to renew uh, parts of his area each year. To make decisions, you can't just always rely on what someone says. Um, it's really important to have the right research to back you up. Um, so that's where the research team at DRNZ and other organisations such as Ag Research really come in handy. Ariane's heading back to Singletree Farm, where Juliet's organising a group discussion about body condition scoring. So this is my office, pretty much. Um, I basically live out of here. This is what I call my go box. It's my lifeline, so uh, I keep everything in here that I need, um, pens for presentations and that kind of thing. So what are these? <laughs> Um, those are De Bono's thinking hats, so they represent different ways of thinking about a problem to come up with solutions. For example, the green hat um, is associated with creativity. So with our meeting this afternoon, it's really important that we use the best information at hand to, to display our recommendations. So that's why we always try and get as many people involved as we can in the conversation. Um, so a lot of our recommendations will be around grouping cows into mobs that are sort of of similar weight. We've got other farmers, so people actually on the ground managing the properties, and then we can have input from me um, as sort of a chairman of the meeting. So now it's really important to think about, um, you know, what does the farm need to do about this distribution of cows that they've got. So people management um, and human resources is a massive part of our industry. So it's really important that if you've got skills in those areas, that there's actually a place for you in the dairy industry. Also at the meeting is rural banker Andrew Smith. He's here to run over the figures for an expansion option for the farm. Yeah, the production's going pretty well this year. A good part of the job is um, talking to clients, uh, dealing with both corporate businesses and also family businesses. The relationships we have uh, grow very quickly because we're talking about money, and, and money, once you have a trust to talk about that, it seems you can talk about anything. Ariana, I guess not only are we a source of capital for development, expansion, general year-to-year -year running of a farm, but I guess our role now is we're part, of, we're part of that team and understanding the business is the most important thing. The farming tradition of Canterbury is wheat, but that's changing. Converting wheat farms to dairy is a big but highly expensive business. Would-be dairy land is now costly. Infrastructure requirements such as cow sheds and irrigation could burn up many millions. Ariane's headed to a farm that Will could buy into and then convert to dairy. So when would you give it the green light? Give you an idea, the bank lends on, on three key components. So that's viability, security, and the last one's personal factor. Do we believe that you'll do exactly what you've told us you will do and do we believe you have the skill? Uh, it's fantastic to see clients doing well. The dairy industry over the last um, couple of years or, or probably 10 years has, has really boomed and, and we're in the peak of it now. No farmer could ever be without this rural professional, the local vet. Okay. Susan Getty specialises in small animals and dairy cattle. For 80% of the year, you never know what you're going to do till you get to work. But generally, it's turn up to the job and you might get a few clients call up about, you know, a sick cow that they want you to see or a blind cow. Susan first shows Ariane how to check the cows for pregnancy. Um, today we're just going to be scanning a few cows. So this is our scanner here, this is the headset and um, this just shows the same picture that's going to be on the screen. So we've got the probe here which goes in the bottom of the cow 
and then it shows us what's underneath the rectal wall underneath so we can see the uterus. Great care needs to be taken when using an ultrasound probe like this. It can easily damage a cow's rectal wall. And there's the calf there. You can see the heartbeat there as well. That's really cool. So would like, is that probably its heart or something? Yep, that's the calf. When the cow calves, she'll produce more milk. And Will is safe in the knowledge his cows will earn their keep. Uh, definitely happy to tackle anything, but I wouldn't lie and say that nerves don't come into it sometimes. There are certainly situations, even though I've been doing it for a while now, where you get there and on the way you're stressing out about all the different possibilities for it. This cow has not been walking well. She's lame. Lameness is usually caused by stones that are trapped in the hoof and cause infection. So we're going to take off a layer off the top here and see if we can see any little marks around the outside here on the white line. So will this grow back? Yep, it'll, it grows uh, similar to your toenails and fingernails as well. It doesn't grow very fast though. Just like cutting a toenail, this doesn't hurt the animal. The hoof is peared back until the problem is revealed. Job easily done here, she's walking better already. But the next one will be more tricky. I guess the good thing with cows is they can't tell you what's going on and you might say what's good about that, but you don't have someone telling you 15 things of what it might be. The infection is bad. She'll need antibiotics and a shoe to assist walking will be fitted. The variety in the job is definitely one of the best parts about it for me, especially during the spring, that's probably our most varied time of year. And you never know what you're going to get when you go to work. Well, what a busy few days. Ariane's learnt heaps. So, if she wants a career in dairy farming, what does the future hold? I think dairy's you know, hugely important, especially to New Zealand. It's, um, it's obviously our biggest industry at the moment. We, we need to keep trying to um, produce milk for the world. The world is wanting it at the moment. The demand out there for highly qualified people that can step into high performing roles is getting higher and higher so I think uh, tertiary education is essential in that. It has been really fantastic and I've really really enjoyed myself. I've learned everything from being a dairy researcher and researching feed to injecting a cow and I could see myself being a dairy farmer or something along those lines. Dairy farming is New Zealand's single most important economic activity, responsible for 25% of our export earnings. Most jobs in the dairy industry involve some work on the farm, so you must enjoy being outdoors and working with people and animals. Training can be completed on the job, but entering the industry with a recognised qualification will allow you to progress faster. There is a skill shortage, so there is a variety of rewarding jobs available and good opportunities to get ahead. A job working in dairy means you're part of an important industry that helps feed more than 100 million people around the world. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand On Air.